Hey y'all, welcome to the next filter class lesson. And we're having such fun with these filters and we can think outside of the box and do fun things with them. Well, this one is especially fun because it can be really individualized um, to fit what you're working on. And so before you can use this filter, oh, maybe I should tell you what the filter is, huh? Or should I just keep you in suspense a little longer? Hmm. Before you can use this filter, you have to make a special file. And it's not all that special. It's simply a .psd file. Are you in suspense yet? Am I driving you crazy? So here is the photo I used on my layout, which I'm not showing you quite yet because I want to be different. It is the Stone Arch Bridge in downtown Minneapolis. I have a bunch of fun photos of this uh, bridge and we took a walk out on it, but this is um, part way going down from underneath it. I have some photos from underneath it too. and. Uh, this is what I wanted to use to apply a texture onto my background. Yep, you got it. Cat's out of the bag. We are going to play with the texturizer filter. And so, anyway, here is the original image, and here, whoops, I'll let you see it accidentally. <laughs> Okay, here is the photo converted into black and white. If you have a photo that's a real contrasting um, with edges and lines, that is going to work best. I could leave it like this or I could do control I and invert it. You can see the lines there much more. Either way, it's going to work. But I did um, play with it and used some things to try to bring out the contrast more um, in Photoshop Elements, uh, I believe. I What did I do? I used things right in here. I think I used some color curves to bring it out and then I just used the convert to black and white and I think I chose the newspaper one but I went through one of these now you have to remember that this uh, uses the texturizer filter uses the red channel more than anything else so um, playing with the reds might be a good idea. I'm not going to play with that anymore. But you can see I took it and I made it some high contrast where you can really see the lines. And then just save that as a .psd file. Now you don't want other layers, just one layer. So uh, mine is saved. And here is my layout of my goofy husband playing Gene Kelly on top of the bridge. <laughs> Okay, and up here is the texture of the bridge from that photo. So you can see how cool this is. Now I want you to think out of the box. Yes, I just didn't think out of the box too much and just made it my background. But you may want to make this into, I don't know. I, that's why you have to think out of the box and teach me and inspire me. Um, use it for a texture for uh, on the photo itself. There we go. Um, um, yeah, I could have applied this back on the same photo. Uh, and as long as you keep it at 100%, who knows what it'll happen. And uh, you, maybe you want to make uh, a tag with it. Or, um, I don't know you gotta think out of the side of the box and inspire me and I can't wait to see what you do with it but anyway as you can see there's the bridge in my background looks pretty cool huh so let's go down here and turn that one off and here's the background layer no bridge on it and this is from the adorable beginnings collab uh, all of this stuff here I 
in honor of my first granddaughter. So excited. And I love the collab and I hope lots of people get it and use it. It's a great collab. But I'm going to go ahead and do a control J on this paper layer. So I have a backup because this does permanently affect the layer. And I'm going to go up to the filter drop down menu all the way down to you guessed it texture and then at the bottom texturizer and it's gonna bring up this pop-up box and here on this pop-up box you can change the view here by going to various zoom levels um, or to a fit in view which fits it that's what it comes up into a default default fit to screen ah not too good fit to view I should never have clicked fit to screen because now I gotta resize this so you can see it um, or you can use these little plus and minus to view the um, effect closer up so you can see more I think a hundred percent would be what you might see um, on your actual paper after it is printed. We're going to fit to view. And so when the texturizer comes up, it defaults to, I think it is uh, canvas maybe. And so you can see this canvas, uh, it doesn't look good at 100%. <laughs> And it, the scaling looks better if you, you know, scale it down or up. The canvas is not my most favorite because if you look at it, ah, not that far up. You can see it doesn't um, repeat very well. It's not seamless. I just don't like it. And well actually the burlap doesn't repeat very well because you could actually see the little squares I think that's the one that I don't like the canvas isn't too bad but um, and uh, they've got brick which I like the brick okay and uh, they've got sandstone and and sandstones okay it gives an okay effect but we want to put our image on there and so those are the default ones that come with it but if you look at this little arrow right here and I remember when I first started doing digital scrapbooking lessons <laughs> or digital scrapbooking layouts this little darn thing was like off the screen and and I kept reading it said click the little arrow and it, I was like hey where's the little arrow it's not there and I thought I was seeing the whole thing. It took me forever to realize that it was off the screen because my screen resolution for my desktop was such that it went off the screen. So remember, you can always grab it at the top, move it around, and you can always grab this corner and resize it if you can't see that little arrow. So you click on the arrow and then click load texture and then you'll navigate to wherever the file is and mine happens to be on my desktop and click open and as soon as you click open it starts putting it in there then you get to play with the scaling which 100 percent is the same size as your photo so see that that looks cool because it zoomed in cut some of it off but I kinda like that right there um, if you go down too far, see you can see it's repeating itself. Okay, there, I got uh, six on the page there. That may be what you want. That it, it's not seamless, but it may be what you want if you're putting other things on your page and you want to see that bridge uh, several different times. Actually, even at 100%, uh, my photo fits here on a 12 by 12 but um, it's not actually 12 by 12 so it's repeating down here that's yeah, okay and then you can change your relief now if you pull the relief way up you can see it really shows it prominently now that is going to be 
often too drastic for what you're doing. It's going to be the focal point of everything unless uh, you, that's what you want and you're just putting a little text here. Um, that's probably going to be too much. You see it brings in some of the color there too. So drop it down. I had mine around 40 at first and then decided it was even too much. And so I don't remember where I, <laughs> I came back and did it again and dropped it down because I didn't want it to be too overpowering. It was too overpowering. Now here's where your light comes from if you want your light source from the bottom. You know most digital scrapbooking layouts have it from the top left so that's what I use but you have all sorts of uh, choices in here if you you know have something um, with a certain angle or something where it might make a difference. Now what is the invert? Well, do you remember how I press control I on my gray, gray scale, my black and white PSD file and it changed from all white to kind of more black? Aha! So rather than testing it in either all black or all white to see what it looks like, you can do that right here from within this program. Just click invert. And I'm going to zoom in. Well, actually I'm not because uh, I got this uh, a sample in the layout to show you between the two inverts what it does. So when you're done, just click OK. And there it is. You can see. But here, um, the top two ones, this is where I decided it was too much. This was around 40 and you can see that it's very distracting. Your eye goes to that busyness at the top and you totally miss the photos at the bottom. But if you zoom in, just to show you invert, this was one invert and this was another. Watch what happens. Observe this piece of the brick right here where you can see that the shadow is coming downward on the line and on this one you can see it's a highlight on the line. So it's going through finding the lines but you can see the difference that it makes. So that's what your invert is going to do. And then this was the one that I decided to go with. I don't know what setting it was but I thought it was um, well enough that it you could see the bridge without it really oh there. It, you know, it plays with your eyes when you're zooming in and out. You, you got to get it right there at the right thing. That's what it's going to look like when printed, I think. I hope. Ah! Anyway, so yeah, you get too much of that um, highlighting. Uh, where's that perfect spot? Sometimes you got to get that perfect spot. There it is. And that's kind of what it's going to look like when it prints out. So I am anxious to see what you do with this and how you apply it and use your photos. And hey, just have fun. <laughs>